Hi, this is Teresa at Pumpkin Glass, and thanks for joining me to make the diamond cut earrings. We're going to be putting birthstones on them today. Um, I've got a clear cubic zirconian here for April. Um, I've got this violet for June. You could also use moonstone, but I like the violet color a little bit better. And I've got a couple citrines here for November. These are three millimeter. You'll want to check the whole size of your stones though um, before you count on using them um, because some of them can have holes that are too small. But those work and I'm gonna measure out here a 10 inch piece of wire to make the two and a half inch earrings. This is diamond cut wire um, that's 20 gauge, which is the common size to make ear wires out of, so it will fit comfortably through someone's ear and earrings. You will also need a pair of cutters, and I'm going to cut this 10 inch piece in half now at five inches. Okay, and make sure they're the same size. They're just a tiny bit off, it's not a big deal. If they're very much off, it can make your earrings uh, look a little bit different when they're finished. So whatever you cut the length to, if one's a tiny bit longer, um, you can just trim that end off. But mine here look pretty good. So let me set my cutters aside. Next, we're going to make the shaping on the earring. And I could have you mark it in the center and then fold it in half, but I think it's just easier to bring the ends together on the wire. And this is a little bit stiffer than normal wire. So once I have my ends meet exactly, I'm gonna pinch that spot between my thumb and first finger to keep it that way. And with my other hand, and I'm keeping an eye on these ends to make sure they're not moving around, I'm gonna run it all the way down and squeeze here, but in the center. So this is the part that's gonna go through your ear right there. So got that so far. And I kind of like it if the center is a little oblong. I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm doing it on the other pair. And you get a better shape if you squeeze this together. Pretty good. So let me check to make sure they're the same because no matter what, you want them the same. And if I am measuring the width of the center part, All right, the very end, I'm a little over an eighth of an inch. If you come down just a little bit further, you can see I'm at just about three eighths of an inch. So on this ruler, every one of these little ticky marks is an eighth of an inch, and I've got three of those. So I'm just one eighth shy of a quarter inch. So next, I want to work harden this little bend here at the end because I want to keep that shape and I don't want it to open up as I put my ear wires on. So I'm doing something called work hardening. I know it looks like a small detail, but it, it does matter. If you look at the earrings, you're gonna work harden this last quarter of an inch. And to do that, all you do is put it in your flat nose pliers and just keep squeezing. And you'll be able to see if you look close that I am flattening out the um, diamond cut pattern in the wire a little bit, but it's not going to show much because this part will be through your earlobe 
And now that's nice and stiff. So when I pull them back open, it'll keep that shape. So I'm gonna repeat it on the other ones. Let me show you here. I'm gonna measure with my finger now. Okay, so I got about a quarter of an inch where my thumbnail is. And I'm gonna squeeze this one just the same. So I'm squeezing hard. Like I say, you should be able to see the pattern flattening out just a bit. That's how you know you're work hardening them. Okay, that's nice and stiff. So I'm gonna open these a bit and put my pen in here. And you can see, there's the top. I'm gonna slide it down so that I'm just a little ways from the top. Let me measure what that is here. So I'm a half inch from the very top of the part of the ear wire that will go through my ear. And I'm gonna pinch it there while I overlap, oops, I overlap these two ends a bit. to make more of that diamond shape. I kind of had a dent there. So you can kind of see what shape I'm making. And I've got a couple little dents there, but we'll fix that in a minute. All right, so slide this other one down measure, make sure I'm about a half inch from the end, and I am, and then I'm going to cross these wires over each other, making sure they're the same length, and just kind of press and form, kind of sliding it up and down the shape to that. Now, I'm a little bit off here. First of all, I need to fix this indentation I've made here. So, I'm not bending the wire. I'm just putting where that bend was, right in the middle of my flat nose, to take that little bit of a crease out. And same on this pair. I've got a little bit of a crease there. Now I'm gonna just use my fingers Kind of like how um, the width that this one has down here, that teardrop shape. So I'm gonna just use my fingers to shape this other one up. And this one has quite a bit of a split in the bottom. I'm gonna decrease that so that both of them are about the same shape. Okay, so let me line them up, make sure they're the same, and can't hold on to them, but I would say they're about the same shape if I can get a hold of them right. All right, now to keep them this way, I wanna work harden them just a little bit. We're not gonna squeeze them to flatten them like we did before. Just kind of don't run, o don't run over the top of the cross. Do each wire separate. And just give them a little squeeze all the way down the length of the wires to work hard in that shape. Doesn't seem like you're doing much, but you actually are. Every time you squeeze wire, you reinforce its memory to keep the shape that it's in. And it will help keep your earrings from pulling. Okay, good. This one is kind of lifting up a little bit in the front. I've got this split. Ideally, you want it like this one where they're touching each other. This one is not. So I might move it back, but for the moment, I'm gonna pull the one that was on top underneath 
so that I've got some tension now to hold them in place. So now I'm gonna put my stones on the ear wires. Doesn't matter which end you choose because you can always flip them around if they're on the wrong side when you go to put them in your ears. So I'm gonna start with April and then June and then the citrines for November. So I kind of like that bigger one on the bottom there. I'm gonna lay them down carefully so they don't fall off while I do the other one. April. June, November, you can see where the hole is. Okay, now to keep these on, we're gonna paddle the end of this wire. Usually I do that with a chasing hammer, but these are so tiny, the area we want to spread. I'm not gonna do it with a chasing hammer, but I'm gonna actually flatten them with these flat nose pliers. And to do that, I think it's easier if you mark the area that you want to flatten on these, um, just so you can get them even. So I only want to do about an eighth inch here. So I'm going to color the wire black so I can see it really well when I put it in the pliers how much of the wire I want to flatten. Whoops, and I dumped a couple stones off. <clears throat> so let's do this one. About an eighth of an inch. All right. So now that I have both of those marked, I'm going to use the part of your pliers you never want to use generally because it will mar your wire, but today we want it to. This part back here, see where the pliers have um, a squared off area where the joint is? We're actually gonna put it in this joint and that's gonna give us enough torque to flatten the wire. So I'll try to do this so you can see what I'm doing. I'm looking at that black line I made and I'm gonna put that all the way back up to the edge of the black line in that joint of my pliers. And I'm gonna give it a good hard squeeze. And yeah, it flattened. I don't know if you can see that, maybe better without the black mark. But see, there's no more diamond cut lines anymore. It's just a little flat tail. And that's gonna be enough to keep my beads from coming out of the wire. So let's do the same thing with this one all the way back in the joint, and I'm at the top of that blackened area. I'm gonna squeeze hard, and it's flat. Test it to make sure it's flat enough, and it is. And I kinda like to line them up to make sure they're falling to the same spot. Now, because we did that, this is a little bit sharp. So you just want to take a, a nail file, and this is um, the 240 grit side, so it's not very rough. And I'm just going to round, see how I'm at a pretty steep angle, I just want to round the edges. So I'm sanding up at an angle over the edge to make sure there's nothing that's gonna catch. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end. So the part that goes through my ear doesn't have any sharp edges. Don't file like this, that's just gonna keep it flat and sharp. Make sure you're coming at an angle and going over the end all the way around to round this. I still got a little bit of sharpness. These are sharper than most because of that pattern that's cut into them. And they never quite feel all the way smooth, but. But 
it's definitely better. Okay, let's do the second one. That is how you make the ear wires. Now, obviously, I'll probably face them, let's see, with this wire on top here when I put them in so that they're opposites. And you want to just thread this end through your ear. I'll show you on an earring card how to put these in. So this is the, the hole in your ear. You're gonna thread this through from the front and slide it around, okay? There's one side. And just keep pulling that same tail through and you'll have your earrings. So thanks for joining us. Kits are available um, in our studio or at www.pumpkinglass.com in our shopping section um, for jewelry making kits.